Okay, we are live. It's two o'clock on the dot. We appreciate everyone being here. I'm going to uh, go through and uh, share out my desktop and we'll come back to this in a minute as we talk about a couple of case studies. I'm going to share with you a, a really cool case study uh, on a client uh, advisor partner relationship where the uh, loan officer made over $50,000 on a single uh, loan opportunity. And I'm going to show you the strategy that we use for that as well as uh, a very, very powerful tool that a lot of loan officers are not familiar with, and that is the margin account. And the fact that in partnering with an advisor, you can actually co-lend and work with that partner using your capability as a mortgage lender with a financial advisor's capability as a margin lender. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that means in a second case study, which I'll share with you that had to do with how could, and I don't know if you've had this come up in the last few years, how could you refinance a client who's underwater or close to it and do that without that client having to come to the closing table with additional cash out of pocket. And that is another strategy that you could use the margin loan for. So that's two of the things we're going to cover today. And of course, we've got uh, our guest today, uh, Mr. Joe Arroyo, who's going to join us and share with us some of the things that he's doing right now uh, to uh, use uh, the tool and how he's approaching it. So we always like to start off with a little bit about uh, how mindset and skill set can work together. Uh, we like to say that, uh, that it's not what the software does, it's what the user does, meaning that as you learn ideas from other people, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to be terribly creative if you can just take what other people are doing and implement and execute that well. So the software is obviously a very, very important tool, and we're always working on that. But in these calls, these sessions, what we do is we take the opportunity to share with you what it is that you as a user can do to uh, progress as a salesperson, as a high producing individual in this lending industry. Uh, we always like to start off with it, you know, we spend a lot of money on licensing and CE and company marketing tools and systems, training and events, uh, and, and your experience, just like this call. You're adding to your experience by being on this call. We do that, again, at some, in some level to make some money, that's important. And what happens at the point that you work hard to get that lead, get that referral in? What happens then? What happens before the 1003 and the loan process and the closing? And it sounds like what Joe's going to share with us is he's created a unique process for him that helps him to dramatically increase his conversions by having that point of sale process that makes the sale, that locks that client in, not only to work with you, but that they're going to move forward before you invest heavily in the 1003 and the loan process and the closing and the other things you're going to do that. We have a system for that that's worked very well for us that we've uh, utilized over the years to increase conversion rates. If you have a better system, use it. If you can develop a better approach to our software, please do. If you don't have that figured out yet, then why not try ours until you get your own system figured out? We figured out that if you answered three key critical questions in a conversation, helping clients understand if they have the cash now to do the transaction, a purchase or refi, do they have the cash flow? Are they going to be comfortable in that transaction over the next uh, month, year, five years, 10 years? And lastly, can they afford it later? Over time, is this a good decision for them financially? I'm going to show you how in this other scenario, this loan officer and this advisor saved a client $1 million over the next five years by refinancing a $12 million home. So we're going to get into some fun stuff. What's going on down here? The tool itself, our goal is to keep it fast, easy, and accurate. If we're not doing that, you let us know because that's a core part of our mission. We want to deliver clarity and confidence. Why? Because a clear client is confident and a confident client takes action. You can't, you can't live with the maybes. The maybes will drive you crazy. If you show somebody this stuff, they know I either want to move forward or I don't. It leads to a lot of quick action and that is critical. Um, weekly updates. We don't have a ton right now because we're working on some major updates that we shared with you last week. Uh, we're currently previewing our new HTML publication features that will create for you live interactive reports. We've been testing that. Uh, we've got quite a while, maybe another couple of weeks before that's ready to go live, but it's going to be worth the wait. Uh, we're also working on the, uh, well, I'll share with you some things we're working on in a minute. 
We did upgrade to .NET 4.0, and that has increased our server times even more. So we're doing a lot of things that we hope you'll start to notice are in increasing even further the uh, response times. We made some tweaks on some reports, uh, open house flyers, compliance-oriented things. And I wanted to share with you, some of you probably aren't aware of this, but uh, I am now, I'm actually in New Jersey right now, and uh, the BarSmart product and platform and, and me, I'm all part of a team now called Mortgage Success Source. Many of you are familiar with their other products, Loan Toolbox, Mortgage Market Guide, uh, Platinum, and those products and the BSA product are all now part of the MSS family. So I'm pretty excited about the resources and the team here. It's going to allow us to continue to develop the uh, uh, BSA platform, and it's a lot of the uh, backbone to allowing us to do some of the more robust integrations such as the LOS syncing uh, and the other things that we're working on today. So you'll get more updates about that uh, in the near future, but I'm excited to be uh, part of the uh, Mortgage Success Source team and continuing to evolve and develop and grow this product as, as our user base continues to, to grow and expand. We're working on those HTML reports. We'll keep you updated there. We're also working on some new mobile report integrations video integration and LOS syncing. People often ask about this. It's probably going to be, this will be later on in the summer uh, where we have both uh, Encompass, uh, Calyx, and we have seven other smaller LOS systems that we're looking at being able to integrate with so that you could go in, fill out an app online, sync it to BSA for your presentation, and then merge that right over to your LOS if you're, if you're ready to begin a loan application process because you've got a client who's ready to move forward with you today. So that all said, let's get to uh, the meat of our call today. Our special guest here today is Joe Arroyo. Joe, thanks for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Todd. Glad to have you here. I always like to start off by uh, asking a little bit about your uh, background so our users kind of get a feel for your particular experience, perspective. So uh, let's start off with some basic questions like uh, how many years have you been in the business? I've been in the uh, real estate finance business for 12 years, but mortgage specifically just for about two, two and a half. Cool. All right. So, so 12 years sort of in the industry space and two years directly in the loan origination space. So what, what have those two years been like for you? Because you're uh, kind of coming into an industry that's been uh, evolving. Excellent. Yep. It's, it's been fantastic. Uh, we're, we're, the way that we're approaching business has really helped us gain uh, market share very rapidly. So where people who had been around for 10, 15 years are uh, floundering, we're, we're succeeding with it. So it's, it's done well. Well, talk about that. Share, share what, what do you think is your, uh, a different way uh, of approaching uh, the business kind of coming in with a fresh mindset? Well, I, 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 <laughs> I approach it from one perspective. And, um, you know, like you touched at the beginning of this, uh, the software in itself is great. The tools are great, but it's you behind it that makes it work. It's what you know and, you know, your beliefs and attitude behind it that really make it work. And we approach it from the perspective of getting 100% debt free. So um, we're helping our clients look at this as how do you actually get into a position where your cash flow is 100% your own? How do you approach a house purchase or purchasing your home and, and pay this thing off? Own it free and clear. Get rid of the rest of your debt. So we help them go through a debt snowball, and you've incorporated that into your software now. And um, and looked at their house to, hey, how can we approach this thing where you can own it without spending over half your working years paying a mortgage payment? Absolutely. You know, one of the things I, I, I want to just pause it because I like to make this point every week, and uh, because it's so critical, is it doesn't matter that you have a specific perspective that it's right or wrong for you. I, I tend to find people that have lots of perspectives, are generally good loan officers, people that find a perspective that they believe about, that they're passionate about, that they, uh, you know, truly, truly engage are exceptional loan officers. And I always say, I don't care what it is, just make sure you figure that out for you. And knowing that your focus is becoming 100% debt free allows you to avoid a lot of ambiguity in saying, well, should you do this? Should you do that? This is what we believe. You may feel differently. But I'm going to go through and show you how you can become debt free. Some people won't resonate with that. Some people will. But people will be very clear about what it is that you do. And that will help you to grow your market very, very quickly. How do you go about that? That's absolutely right. That's 100% right. 
how do you go about that now, Joe? Do you do you work with realtors? Do you work with financial advisors? Do you try to network through clients? Do you do events? What are some of the ways that? Uh, they- oh, I have my daily radio show, okay. uh, and that didn't just that just came about the last six months. So it's not like that's been the main driver. Uh, that has, though, been increasingly a, a great point of connection for different trusted advisors. So I'm, I'm working on building in my relationships with financial planners and uh, investment guys and attorneys for wills and estates. And, and so I'm working on, uh, on building out those referral relationships. It's really been heavily based on client referral though so so someone going out and saying hey i got this here you should use this guy and then it's also been based on realtor referrals and um from the realtor referral side you would think well why is a realtor going to send it to one of their clients to a guy who sit there and tell them they need to get out of debt as quick as they can uh, because you, you would think counterintuitively the realtor just wants this person to buy as much as they can and be done with it, right? But what we found is that when a client's coming in, we've answered their two, and, and like you said, they either resonate with what we're talking about or they don't. If they resonate with what we're talking about and we show them a systematic plan that works where they can get into a house and then own it, they're walking out educated and they have answered their two question their two major questions which is is now the time to buy and, and can I afford it so when a client that a realtor refers to me walks out of the office they're ready to put in an offer they're ready to make movement they're not kicking tires on 25 properties that that's great you know one of the things you know we, we talk about the story and the logo here bar smart repay smart Loan officers often get so fixated on the borrowing part and the borrowing smart that you're talking about saving the client a few thousand dollars here and there on closing costs or saving them an eighth of a point on rate. When you actually focus on the repay smart, you're focusing on the financial impact over 20 or 30 years, and that can be hundreds of thousands of dollars. So a key way that you can differentiate yourself is learn to tell that story about not just how am I going to borrow smart, how am I going to repay smart? Uh, in working with me. If you're going to work with me, I'm going to show you how to repay smart and you're going to own your house sooner and that's going to save you, again, fifty, sixty, eighty thousand dollars 80000 in interest over time. Absolutely. And it does, it has that uh, effect of taking the major part of this, the discussion off of, you know, trying to beat me up over a $500 difference between what some other guy out there may be at. It just takes that, that, that so rarely even comes up now that um, I, I, just, I just don't have to deal with it very often. Yeah, I have, I have people say, well, you know, how do I use your tool to become, you know, more effective or, or more competitive? I'm like, well, by making your competition irrelevant. I said, yeah. it's not about winning another 5%. It's truly making your competition irrelevant to the conversation because you're able to show them things and communicate things in the process that they simply have no idea uh, how to discuss or describe. You go through and show a client buying a new home, how to debt snowball and, and get all their debts paid off after buying a new home in 12 or 14 or 16 years. I mean, that is a totally game changing conversation and that will differentiate you. And when you have people calling you, when you have realtors referring you clients for refinances, when you have advisors doing that, you know that you're starting to do something special because people will find you if you're doing something unique in the marketplace. Well, and the, the realtor is saying to their client, because the client is saying to the realtor, listen, I'm nervous. Can I, is this the right time for me? That, those are the two questions I hear over. Is this the right time for me to buy and can I afford it? They're asking the realtor, and the realtor gets to say with confidence, which they love to do, listen, go to this guy. He's going to lay it out for you. You either you either can or you can't. Maybe you're $25,000 higher. Maybe you're 25000 less, right? But you're going to walk out and have you're, you're going to have it laid out for you. So they're really, they like knowing that they can be in that position of a trusted advisor with their client where they're sending them to somebody who's going to answer those questions. And pe- people love to buy. They hate to be sold, but people love to buy. I mean, think about it. You got extra money in your wallet or in your bank account. We start to think about things we want to buy. 
So yeah. if someone says, is now the time, the realtor is really you know, the right expert to say, is now the time? As a loan officer, I can't tell you if now is a perfect time. I can tell you rates are at all time historical lows, that we've got tax benefits, we've got other things that might be worthwhile, but the realtor can help to answer that question. If you can answer that, can I afford it question in a clear, compelling way, there's no reason for that client not to move forward because they're telling you that's the only obstacle between me moving forward and not is, can you tell me it's a good time and can I actually afford it? Yeah, except the one part we do have in that discussion for is now the time is that interest rate sensitivity discussion, something that we can show very easily on the software. is Listen, hey, historical average last 10 years is what, 6.5%? Mm -hmm. The last decade, or at least it was, I think, from 2000 to 2010. So historical average, if we just move back to the historical average over the last decade, what does that do to either A, your qualifying ability, or B, what that same house would be, what that payment would be? So we can help them say, gosh, even if houses continue to decrease in value another 5% two years in a row, but then rates go up two points, what's that effect on your ability to, to cash flow it now? What's your effect five years and 10 years down the road? And the truth is, is that even if the market, pardon me? I was going to say in one of the prior videos that we did, we had this question came up and we showed how you could model, for example, buying a house today and uh, or waiting three years or waiting, you know, five years. And, and, and there is a cost of waiting that, you know, if, if the property values continue to go down, because with our appreciation rates, you can actually put in a negative number. And we did that because some people wanted to say, what if I buy a house now and they go down in value, you know, uh, 1% a year for the next five years? Uh, that's kind of cool because you can actually show that you're still better off than renting or maybe even uh, 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 doing something and just and just delaying the process. Because it's ironic if you if you wait five years and the property values go down one percent a year, but then when you go to buy that house, you're paying two percent more in interest. You'll still pay a great deal more over time. Yeah, absolutely. So that's that's where we're also able to help show that in in absolute earnest integrity without them feeling like they're getting sold. Because again, we're just showing them the information. We're educating them on the information. We can show that. And that's, that's the true data. You know, those, those are the real numbers. So it works very well in, in, in answering both those questions. So, so talk about your process. You said that you've got a, a process now that you feel good about that's helping you to, to win a lot of business. Tell, tell us about, say, from the time that you do your first marketing efforts with a radio show or calling on a, a realtor, advisor, whatever, sort of what's your process like? Well, two things. One is you 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 really helped me with this about a month, a month and a half ago when you made the statement that when you were um, doing your, your loan practice back in the 90s, no one knocked on your door and said, hey, will you lay this out for me in detail? Right. No one was. No, if I understood what you were saying correctly. Yeah. And um, so, even even with those types of strong referrals that I'm getting for that specific purpose, the person, the client coming in the door, does not know what to expect because they haven't been through that discussion before. So what I realized is I I'm not waiting for them to ask for this specifically. I'm I'm laying it out. And um, so that's been that's been a big help. But the process is that I'll get the referral in. I'm gonna spend 15 minutes on the phone with the client. I have a, a, an assistant, and I pass it on to get uh, follow-up documents um, to schedule for a one-hour face-to-face appointment. And by that time, the person, after my 15-minute phone call with them, they've gotten us basic documents. That getting those, I tell them we need those documents at least 24 hours in advance so that we can do the uh, the analysis and have that ready. So looking at their credit and looking at uh, their income numbers and so on and their debt, we, we, we tell them we need to have that 24 hours in advance at least uh, to be able to have a productive meeting. And uh, then they come in, we sit down, we review it, we have the discussion. And uh, some people are, are gangbusters uh, for it and like, you know, 
uh, shouting from the housetops how awesome it is, and some people probably could care less. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they still appreciate that we have given them detailed information to make to make a decision from. And then, uh, luckily, I'm in a position now where where from there sort of a, a problem the, 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 the files taken you know taken to close. So I'm really only having two major points of contact and that's the first fifteen minute discussion and then um the the hour in, in, in person meeting. Cool. So I'm gonna walk that back with you. First, you know, reiterating the, the, the point that Joe is making there is we often think that clients have expectations. And when I say they don't have expectations, I don't mean they don't have expectations. I'm saying that their expectations are irrelevant unless you try to live up to their expectations. If you create a unique process that is uniquely your own and even begin your process, when people used to call me on the phone, they'd say, hey, I'm calling about your interest rate. One of the first things I would say to them is, well, let me tell you, the way we do business is unlike anything that you've probably experienced. How many mortgages have you had? And they might say, oh, I've had three. Great. I can guarantee you one thing. This experience will be different than any other experience you've ever had working with a lender. Is that okay with you if it's a great experience? You can just frame it that way because you're really doing what? You're saying, this isn't going to be like anything you've been through before. Because they have expectations and so often as loan officers, as salespeople, we try to meet their expectations. But what if their expectations are crappy because they've had mediocre lending experiences with mediocre lenders. And what you're really doing is saying, I'm going to create expectations that render your expectations irrelevant. I'm going to so far exceed them. That's what we found with those three questions. When we got in the head and started asking clients what they really wanted to know and asking them that, they told us, you know, I want to know if I can afford it on a monthly basis. I want to make sure I have the cash. I want to know if this is a good decision over time. And we kept hearing the same answers. We're like, crap, man, this isn't rocket science. We just need to build something that allows us to demonstrate that we know what it is that's important to them and that we're going to create a process that is going to be really, really uh, unique. Just blow away any idea or expectation that they might have. And you'll win 90 plus percent of your deals, not 70 percent of your deals. You'll win 80 or 90 percent. And it sounds like to me, you've got whatever your marketing is, whatever you do to generate a lead, when you've got that lead, is that first lead contact, that first 15 minutes, is that typically on the phone? It is. It is. Cool. Yeah. Well, and, and for, as far as lead generation, too, hey, I've, I've gotten in, in the last six months, I've had 24 in-house uh, real estate offices meetings um, that I've presented at with it, with it being a closed office. And the brokers did that because of the focus of our message oh, that's of getting, uh, of, of working their cash flow to, uh, to get that free. So it so allows, it's able uniqueness to... allows you to open these types of doors and, you know, differentiate yourself on uh, why you need to get in front of the person. That's I mean, awesome. if you call up a realtor, which is a conversation I have, and you say to the realtor, listen, uh, if we spend 15 minutes together, I can show you how after a client leaves my desk, they're going to walk out educated, confident, and ready to buy. Do you, do you have 15 minutes where we can get together? Mo that, that's something they're hearing a lot. But they're, and, I, and, I, and you tell them, I guarantee your loan officer is not doing it. That's that's cool. So you're you're creating some real raving fans uh, with these realtors, which is unique and difficult in a closed office environment. But it's because your message is so different, they're willing to make that introduction. And again, you start to know when you're really creating a unique experience when people start uh, talking about you. You're the great restaurant in town that they want to tell their friends about, and that is a that's a good tip that you're starting to do things right. Yeah. So, so that yeah. so if you go into real estate office, you you talk about you know uh, some of these strategies. How do you typically address a, a, a group of realtors? 
we address it from uh, walking through, if you're familiar with um, with Dave Ramsey, the baby steps of uh, you know building an emergency fund, doing the debt snowball, fully funded emergency fund, and then dually attacking your uh, your mortgage and building up an investment bucket. So we go through that. We show the research behind it as to why that. We believe in earnest that works best, and um, then in the mortgage context, we actually we actually do a case study with the area median income, uh, where the average person that we're seeing falls in in their in their debt for consumer debt, including student loans, so credit cards, cars, student loans. And we're showing how, um, with the typical purchase price, uh, the median purchase price and the median income, uh, uh, we can show their client how to cash flow the purchase at their average purchase price. We're not telling people to go out and buy a hundred thousand dollar condo or anything. Um, uh, we, we can show them how to cash flow their purchase, make it work, and own it free and clear in far less time. Than, uh, than they thought possible. And then it's also an education for the realtors as well on, on their personal finances. So we're setting it up purely from I'm delivering true value in the education process. I'm, I'm giving best practices. How do you make this work um, for your personal life and why this important for the housing market and your clients? Absolutely. So, so again, you're completely – you're. You're rendering the competition irrelevant because the competition is going to be competing on a mortgage product or an interest rate. And you're saying, I'm a financial educator. I happen to focus and a lot of my money comes from the lending that I do. But at the end of the day, what I'm looking to do with your client is help them in these key areas. And again, you've got a simple process, four cornerstones, four benchmarks, four whatever, the four baby steps that we've got to do together to get you going. And that includes buying a house and doing it in the most efficient way possible. And that gets that. And again, if you look at this and say, well, gosh, I I've had people say, you know, that sounds like a lot of work. Well, yeah, you know, most things uh, that are worth doing, if you're going to take your income level to, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars a year as a loan officer require a lot of work. But if you don't do the work, you're still going to spend the time. You may be sitting in your office squirming and wondering what it is that I'm going to do to go out and generate business. You're, you're still exposing and expending the energy. You're just not getting paid for it. Fine. No doubt. No, I, I don't know what it's like in other markets, but in our market, the average loan officer does about two and a half deals uh, a month. And yeah. so... Um, the, national, the national average has been somewhere around that four to four and a half. And I've talked to companies that have 500 plus loan officers where you, know, you, can, you can top grade them and two thirds are doing one, two transactions a month. And the other third is doing you know, to anywhere from 20% to a third are doing the majority of all of the business. Yeah. And there's always, yeah. a, you know, always kind of, you know, I always, always ask people, why would someone be really, really successful and someone not? And having had 120 plus loan officers in my production shop in North Carolina, I found that, that it was, it wasn't, it wasn't looks, it wasn't necessarily intelligence. It often came down to people finding a simple system and working that system and if you're inside of 24 offices over the last six months, I mean, that sounds like a lot. But if you think about it and you really break that down, that's what, four offices per month, if my math is correct. That's an office a week. Yeah. And I, I will often tell people, if you really want to dramatically grow your business, it's not something silly, crazy, like go out and see 50 financial advisors this week. It's getting to one financial advisor's office a week. And suddenly six months will go by and you'll have more business than you know what to do with. But it's just that baby step of taking the first step, getting out, starting to see those people and building the relationships. It's a little bit of work, but for what we get paid in this industry, it's not that much work. It's, it's a phenomenal return on your investment. Uh, that's really my next step and what I look forward to learning from um, <clears throat> from what you did on it with the, with the financial advisors and um, – I really, I'm working on cracking it. I haven't cracked that, that mark. I haven't wrapped my head around yet what my value is to them. And uh, so that's really my next major, major focus is, and I mean, you, you opened up the call with something I just hadn't even considered about the, uh, the, the, the partnering for, with the, with the margin, margin account. So that, I, I think there is big opportunity there. And again, you know, you, you talk about 
people want, my experience is anyway, pe- people want to refer, you know, like if, if someone asks you, hey, do you know where a good place to eat is? You feel really good to be able to tell that person to go to a place that you know is really good, you know? Yeah. You, you feel great that you were able to tell them that. And so um, when you give someone the opportunity to refer you and they can actually feel excited about it and feel really good that they're sending them to someone who's going to take care of, take care of them and really look out for their interests, I, I found people will go out of their way to refer you because they, they benefit from it. Yeah, and, and they'll ask, hey, how was your meal? And if you say it was really great. They will refer more people there, and, and yeah, and you feel you get to feel great about it that you sent them to somewhere that they enjoyed. You know, I mean, it's I think most most people feel that way. So, um, I, I'm not. Other than that, I'm not entirely sure, uh, but I I know there's a big opportunity to expand this with the accountants and um, financial planners. Um, so, and the discussion, I, I, I will say this, the discussion with, with, financial, with financial planners is, listen, you, we're dealing with, what, 10, 15% of a person's income that we're beating them over the head to set aside and save. Well, what about the other 50% of their income that's going out the door to cover minimum payments on, you know, debt, credit cards, cars, student loans, and the house payment? If we can address that, show them how to minimize those liabilities and eliminate debt, you're freeing up a significant portion of their income that makes them funding their investment accounts a lot easier than it is today. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I have a lot of exposure to advisors, and, and usually the first time I show them the Bar Smart tool, um, they're just astonished because they just didn't know anything like that existed. Really? In, in the lending industry, I mean, think about it. I mean, in the financial planning industry, there are 20, 30 top tier financial planning software pe- companies that I could name that I have seen over the years and probably 60, 70 smaller ones that I've never even heard of before. And these are major platforms designed to manage assets. If I ask you how many platforms in the lending industry are you aware of that allow you to manage liabilities? You can probably name about three. You know, yeah. you can yeah. you can name our tool, uh, maybe the uh, Edge tool. You might uh, look at Excel. I, I consider Excel my biggest competitor because some people have spent so much time and energy building Excel spreadsheets to do this that they're just having a hard time letting go of them. The right. problem is they're not they're not compliant anymore and they're not dynamic. And uh, if you use an Excel spreadsheet, you know you might end up. Uh, costing yourself or your company a lot of money uh, in uh, the future. So you got to kind of start to think about some of those kinds of things. But it's not a matter of what should I use or, or necessarily should I use something, but what am I going to use to to do that type of, of planning services for my clients? And so I'll, I'll wrap this up because I want to get into a couple of case studies and share with you some of these ideas on, on, on the margin stuff. When you, know, you meet with that client, you spend your 15 minutes in that process. You tell them a story, I take it, and, and that story is enough. You get them excited about working with you, and you collect some information. And then once that information is in, then that's when you uh, schedule your one hour to sit down and, and go through uh, and do the presentation. And you said you're doing most all your presentations are with the client live, so you're kind of going through the BSA and, and doing it uh, dynamically as they sit there? Yep, yep, absolutely. And, and you can then have scenario discussions mm-hmm. uh, that are real time. Yep. And, and so that I think is because otherwise, if it's too set in stone, um, then they'll pick one variable that doesn't work for them, you know, or isn't believable, or isn't I, I don't know. That's what I found, and they'll focus on that. Well, if you if you detect that one point that's a big hot spot, we can focus in on it and, and drill on it right there. And so I, I like that a lot better than um, putting in all of this time kind of blind, you know, creating a, a, a scenario and then sending it out. I, I'd rather we have the discussion on the key points and, and do it right there live. I got you. That's cool. You're able to sit there. You probably have a setup with a computer and a big monitor or something where they can see what you're doing on the screen. Yep, absolutely. 
Cool. I, yeah, I've talked to someone recently. So they're doing that live in the office, and then they'll actually do uh, they'll record it as they're sitting there at their desk. And then they'll send the client a link to it so that they can go back and they won't give them the actual physical report. Uh, so, but they'll give them the video uh, so they could go back and watch it. And he's surprised at how many clients will actually go home and they'll actually watch the video again. And then they'll write down some questions and stuff. Because if you think about it, we can go through this stuff pretty quickly, but for a client who's not as comfortable with the math or the numbers, it's a lot of stuff for them to take in all at once. Absolutely. Cool. Uh, well, you uh, hang out with us for a little bit here, and we'll go through a uh, couple of, uh, of case studies and stuff, and uh, appreciate your insight. I, I think that hearing about the way you're doing it is helpful because, again, it's, it's another framework that someone might uh, like in terms of, and I've heard this before, the orientation, collecting of the data and the information. Some people won't meet with someone until all the data is in. Other people like to do an initial call or something just to make sure that there's a fit. Uh, you sound like the type of guy that might fire a prospect if you just don't feel like there's a good fit on that first call. Easily. I've, I'm, I'm, I'm a nice guy, but if someone is uh, not in for what we're doing, I will put the file in the trash. Yeah, and I, I've done that by saying, you know, I think you'd be better off served by so-and-so. I've got a guy, Don Kennedy, that's a nice guy. He does a great job. He'll take care of you. He does more of what you're looking for. And that, right. that'll really that'll really screw a client's mind up because they're our prospect. They're like, "What do you mean?" You know, and you're basically saying, "I'm firing you," you know, but you don't say that directly. I I know someone that can help you, um, but it's just this is not what we do. It's the most. It it sounds scary to do it, but I can tell you, if you do that, my my first client firing was one of the most liberating things I've ever done because I realized I just saved myself a month of anguish dealing with somebody that if, if they're already that. You know, certain people are just, you know, they're just inherently that way. And, you know, you're going to spend 30, 40 days with them. It's going to be miserable for you and for them. So, you know, you don't have to do that. You can start to pick and choose who you want to work with, especially when you get into a zone and a niche with this is what I do. And and uh, people will respond to that. They'll, they'll, they'll be. Yeah, well, and, you know, as, as I'm sure you've experienced, a lot of times they'll come back uh, right away. Yeah. No one likes to be fired. And um, I've had a, I've so, had come back on so the it'll spot. happen that uh, I had one guy who's probably the most. He was an he was an attorney, real estate attorney. He knew everything. Uh, he was so just aggressive uh, on the offensive, you know. And um, I, I told him I, I didn't care to work with him anymore on this. It wasn't really what we were, were what we were looking to do. His attitude changed in two minutes, and since then he's referred me two large loans and I think he's done like three more with me so <laughs> and I don't think we ever would have gotten anywhere if we didn't have that conversation yeah yeah sometimes you can turn them on the spot by saying I'd like for you to work with someone else and they'll say why say well I just don't feel like we're heading in the same direction this is where I want to take you and this is where you want to go um, yeah. and yeah. I don't think it's you know like well actually I, no I, I really do want to go that way and then you know they'll soften up a little bit and they'll change their tune just kind of like getting the venom out uh, and you want to defang them early on in the process, uh, yeah. otherwise they're, they're a real pain in the ass. Excuse my French. All right, cool. <laughs> let's, let's talk about a couple cases. I want to show uh, an interesting one. This was uh, from a Morgan Stan. This is a Morgan Stanley client, a very high net worth client. Um, and I want to show you a case that was a simple case with a twist, um, and it was going to save this guy you know a million bucks over five years, uh, plus uh, provided a you know. 50k plus commission uh, to the LO, and then I want to share with you another another simple uh, case study that uses the same concept of margin loans and how you can possibly think about looking at uh, your advisor partners as a co-lending partner because a lot of them haven't really considered how they can do things that you can't do. Now, let me just share quickly what a margin loan is. A margin loan is a loan against securities. Uh, consumers can borrow up to 50% of the value of their portfolio with no qualifications, okay? And it's tax deductible if that money is taken out and reinvested or used for any kind of a uh, business or, or uh, investment purpose. So if your client has a million dollars with you in investments, that client can borrow a half million dollars on margin and pay interest on that. And that interest rate has become very competitive 
Uh, some of the larger financial service companies have margin loans of 1% right now. That means you could borrow a million dollars from them at just 1% on margin. Uh, other lenders I've seen anywhere from 3 to 5% or they'll have uh, stratas based on the amount that's being borrowed. But think about it. If your client could borrow 50% of their portfolio without touching their portfolio, and they could do it at an extremely low interest rate, say 2 3 4%, what might that allow you to do for that client when it comes to having a shortfall that they're currently experiencing? We all know lots of people that have that. Let me show you this first client here. I'm going to call him Stanley Morgan uh, to protect the innocent. His gross annual income was $3 million. His estate planner said just use 0% because in his mind, even though this isn't really true, he said he wouldn't qualify for any tax benefits, but I wasn't going to argue that point. So we said, okay, we'll use 0%. This particular house he lives in is in Malibu. Uh, he has a mortgage on it. He has a five-year arm interest only with Barclays, okay? And it's at 5.5%. He has a $6 million balance right now. So he's paying $35,000 a month. So that was one opportunity. The second opportunity, though, and this was a comment that came up by the advisor, is that he had a yacht, a $2 million, or it was about a $5 million yacht, but he had a $2.25 million note with Bank of America at 7%. And his question was, could we refinance this as a house, as a second home? And the answer is, yes, we could. But he just didn't want to, he, he didn't know if he was going to keep it for very long. He might sell it in the next year or so. So it wasn't like he wanted to go through a lot of hassle to do that. So what we came up with as a real simple strategy, I'll show you on the next page, and it was to refinance the first into a new five-year arm at a lower rate and to refinance the yacht into a margin loan at a much lower interest rate. Now this is the story behind this is this client is looking in Santa Fe to buy a house. He wants to buy a ranch for around $10 million. So he's looking to buy a $10 million property in the next year or two that he's going to retire into. So he didn't think he would keep this house in Malibu for more than about five years. That's why we were going to go into a new five-year arm. But the new mortgage payment, so you borrow $10 million, okay, uh, at around 4% right now on a 30-year fixed, he was looking at about $48,000, let's just say $50,000 a month was going to be his mortgage payment on the new property he's buying. So he may be buying that soon and carrying both the new mortgage of, of, of close to $8 million, say 80% on the $10 million uh, purchase, and then carrying the existing mortgage of $6 million for a couple of years as he transitions into retirement. So again, a very simple scenario, but you can see how powerful this is because one, the advisor referred this to a loan officer because that loan officer had talked to him about collaborating and working together with his clients on freeing up cash flow and creating additional wealth. So here's what we did, a very simple scenario. Here's, here's what was done. The mortgage was refinanced to a new five-year arm interest only at a rate of about 2.875% on $6 million. The margin loan, this is, so this is what the loan officer is doing. This is what I mean by collaborative lending. The loan officer is doing the refinance of the $6 million loan. It's a 48% LTV. Okay, and they were going to be able to get about a 3%, 2.875 rate on this with the lender they were working with. And this was an in-house, it was sort of an in-house uh, lender deal because obviously it's not easy to go out and get a $6 million uh, loan in today's market. So this was being done uh, in-house uh, with the Morgan Stanley Bank. Margin loan, $2.25 million. This is what the advisor was doing. 3.25% was the rate he could get this client on a margin loan because the client had you know, tens of millions of dollars with the investment house. So he could easily borrow on margin 2.25 million and do that at three and a quarter. So look at the difference here. This is what the client's paying now. This is the new payment here, 24,468. So let's kind of break it down. Can they, you know, what's the closing cost? They were charging 20,000 in closing costs. They were basically doing like a flat fee uh, in uh, origination and closing costs. Uh, the monthly payment difference was $31,531. So that was the aggregate net payment difference between the old first mortgage and the yacht loan and the new first mortgage and the margin loan for this particular client. 
and the time frame was just five years. But using a five-year time frame and an 8% return, which is what this advisor wants to use, it was a million dollar wealth impact over just five years. Now, as simple as this case is, could you, as a loan officer, for those of you who you know use the BarSmart tool today, does this make sense? And could you illustrate this? Because it's a very simple illustration, even though it's incredibly complex in a way, because to know that this is an option requires some experience. Modeling it, the tool makes it very easy. You got an old mortgage here at six million and you got a, a, a yacht loan here. We're doing a new mortgage loan and a margin loan. You're borrowing 8.25, you're borrowing 8.25. So if you wanted to, you could roll these closing costs in, right? I could just go up here and you know bump the margin loan by two, two, five, two, two, uh, five, oh, two, oh, oh, see if I can actually do it. That doesn't seem right. Uh, here we go. It's hard, I tell you, with all the uh, all the zeros. Oh, no, I knew I had an extra zero in there. Right, so I can go up. Oh, I still messed it up. 70,000, sorry. That's what happens when you try to talk and stuff. So if you want to, you could even roll in the closing costs, right? And you'd see how that flows through on the monthly payment. Obviously not a big difference there. And, you know, we only cost ourselves a few thousand dollars over three years to make it even easier. But the ability to model something like that and build the relationship it's all part of this dynamic that we're talking about. You got to have the tool because if you, if you have the conversation, you don't have the tool, how are you going to uh, impress a client of this magnitude to do this? And if you have the tool, but you don't know how to go out and talk to an advisor or even have the chutzpah to go out and say, this is something I want to do, then you're not going to have these opportunities. So we want to try to bridge two different worlds there uh, with you and encourage you that these kinds of things are possible. Now, let me take the short crawl example and do the same thing. And this was done by a, uh, a financial advisor, loan officer who were working together. And here's the situation. The client, I'm going to call him shortfall client, has 150000 15000 a year in income, 38% tax bracket in the state and federal they're in. They have a 30-year mortgage with Citibank. They have a balance of 307000 at five and a quarter. They're paying seventeen sixty seven a month. The client wants to refinance to a lower rate but can't without coming to the closing table with more cash. So what was, what's the dynamic here? You know, and you, you've probably seen this quite a bit, right? The property value had dropped from about 400,000 when they bought the house down to around 348. So they were gonna have to come to the closing table with about $35,000 because they didn't wanna have mortgage insurance so if they were going to borrow 80% loan to value on the 348 property value, they could only borrow 278. So 278 minus what they owe 307, that was going to be pretty uh, pricey to them. They were going to have to come to the closing table about 35 grand. Now they had the money. They had a significant savings account over $300,000 with the financial advisor. They didn't want to liquidate the savings. They just weren't comfortable taking that money out of their savings account. But that's the beauty of a margin account. With a $300,000 investment account, they could actually borrow up to $150,000. In this case, the loan officer and the advisor worked together and said, let's do this. Let's refinance the 30-year mortgage to 278.4, that's 80%. We'll do a 3.75% 30-year fixed. And then you set up a margin loan for them at $35,000. And in this case, with this particular financial uh, planning group, it was 4.5% was the margin rate. Now, this is an adjustable margin loan. So just like any other loan, you need to know what is it. It's a, it, it adjusts every month. It's got a 1% cap. Uh, now, I want to share with you what we did here because this is the little more advanced part. The life cap over the start rate, there was no life cap over the start rate because these things can go as high as they want to go based on market rates. But the advisor said, if this goes over 6%, I'll just pay it off because at that point, their investment portfolio is going to be probably earning less than their cost of the uh, interest on that particular loan, that $35,000 loan. So let's just say, put in a cap of 1.5% and know that if it goes over, so 1.5%, so start rate of 4.5, 1 1.5 over that would be 6 so in other words, if he sees that LIBOR-based 
uh, margin loan go over 6% in the next four or five years, he'd tell the client, let's just take and liquidate $35,000 of stock and pay it off. So that's one thing that we did that I thought was pretty, pretty interesting, right? So we're just going through and saying, we're going to create a cap ourselves because they've got the cash to pay this off. It's just, that's, that's what the loan came from. There's 300,000 of equities there and you're borrowing 35,000 from yourself so that the 300,000 continues to earn interest. Keep that in mind with a margin loan. If I borrow 35,000 from myself and I pay four and a half percent on the interest, that means the 35,000 stays invested. If it stays invested and the advisor earns 6% on it, I'm actually still positive. I'm making money. But that's not the important thing. What's the important thing? The important thing is it made this possible. It made it possible for the client to refinance that first mortgage down to 278.4 and get it down to 80% and drop the rate from five and a quarter to 3.75. And that's the beauty of what I believe is a, is a pretty good kept secret right now is that people keep asking, how do I deal with these shortfalls? I keep having clients that can't do this. I'm like, ask them if they have a financial advisor. And would you mind that? Don't, all you got to do is say, did I just lose the call? This service is provided by Kendall Todd, the host of... Please enter your host ID. Hey everybody, sorry. Uh, for some reason my, uh, my phone line just dropped, but I came back in. That's what's so cool about this is that you're able to work with someone. So you talk to a client and that client says, uh, yeah, I have a financial advisor. Say, would you mind if I talk to him? I may have an idea. You're not going to ask him, do you have money invested? How much do you have invested? Do you have a financial advisor? This is a way for you to get to meet the financial advisor of any client that comes into your office that's in a shortfall position. And there are very wealthy clients that are in a shortfall position. You know, that's just the nature of the, the housing dynamic right now. Do you have an advisor? Would you mind if I talk to him? And you call that advisor and say, look, I've got the following situation. You've got a client who could really benefit from refinancing right now. We could take them from five and a quarter to 3.75, taking their payment from 1767 to 1289, but I need your help. Would you, be con would you be open to sitting down with them and talking to them about using a margin loan to pay off the difference in the shortfall? Because they can borrow it from themselves at a very low rate. It keeps the money invested with you, but look what it's gonna do for this client. And you could take in a case study. This would be a great example of a case study. First, I've financed in the closing costs. There's no out of pocket. So step one, there's no cost for them to do this out of pocket. Secondly, I'm going to free up $346 a month in positive cash flow that they could either invest with you or that they could use to continue to pay down their mortgage debt. And if we look at this over time, because you know this client said they were going to be in this house for a long time, say 30 years, not doing this is going to cost them $206,604. Because if we refinance this 30-year fixed, and we put it in with a new 30 and a margin loan, you know, even in a worst case scenario, which is what we modeled here, we got a chance to save this client over 200,000 bucks. Is that something that you might have some clients who they would like to participate in the extremely low interest rate environment we're in today? Is that something you'd like to help some of your clients do? Have you ever thought about using a margin loan? Because if you get one client to refer you into a financial advisor, you're going to get to have that conversation with that advisor about all their other clients and you become a collaborative partner in the lending process. Financial advisors cannot solicit a client to borrow money on margin and invest, but they can solicit a client to borrow money to prepay debt. So if you're my client, you've got 300000 in my account. I can't say, hey, let's borrow 100000 out and invest some more money. That's self-serving. That's called Reg T. You're prohibited under Reg T from soliciting a client to borrow a margin. But you can say, look, there's an opportunity here for you to use that margin. And if the margin account, if the interest rate goes up, what do you have the ability to do? We'll just go ahead and pay it off if it gets too high. If the interest rate goes above 6 7 then we'll just go ahead and sell some securities and pay it off. Those are some things that you can do that would really help a lot of clients and create some incredible opportunities for you. 
and some of the clients that you work with. So think about how you can become a collaborative partner. And that is my uh, case study tip for the day. And that is partner with advisors and co-partner as co-lenders. If we can't, if I can't do 100% of the financing needs of the client, we can probably work together and come up with some other ways that we could uh, help this client through a, a particularly difficult time. What if property values improve over the next five years? You're not talking about 30 years. In three to four years, if the property values go up, they could always do an equity line and pay off the margin loan. Or if stock values go up, they could pay off the margin loan from their stock values. I mean, there's plenty of ways. You're giving the client lots of different flexibility for how they handle this. The key is this is a convergence of two things, a skill set in using a tool to present and simultaneously a mindset of how I go about thinking of myself differently. As Joe was saying, you know, I'm going to go through and end up very rarely competing with other loan officers because of the way I position myself in the market. So I'm going to see if there are any questions here. Um, and uh, again, if you have any questions, email us at support at candletod.com. Uh, and uh, please, uh, if you aren't already a customer, if this is the first time coming through, we do go up on our prices July 1st. So you want to lock in your current prices now. And uh, let me uh, hit the stop button here for a second on the screen recording. And I'll see if uh, there's some questions in here that I can uh, help with or uh, or uh, try to help with. Let's see. Please call in. Uh, that's not it. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see. Can you guys also help with marketing to a voice to divorce attorneys? I tell you, um, there is a great. What's the guy's name that does the divorce? He's got a, a program. I'll, I just blanked out on it. Um, he's out in the uh, midwest. I uh, know the the northwest. And he has a program. It's actually designed for loan officers to go in and educate divorce attorneys on how he can refer the sort of couples to him to help with the splitting up of the financing and the house. And he controls the distribution of the real estate asset and the mortgage financing and everything else. So I'll, 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 um, I'll find out uh, who that is. You might be able to Google him because um, he's got some websites and some other things out there. He, did a, he was one of our, our call speakers last year. Uh, but uh, I'm just literally uh, blanking out right now, which I apologize for. But we'll see if we can find that. But I bet if you Google, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, mortgage professionals working with divorce attorneys, and they, they have a they have a LinkedIn site, they have a website. He has a program. I don't, I don't know. It's like maybe a grand or so, and you get his whole kit and and training and PowerPoint things like that. Uh, I'm doing the same thing uh, using a local credit union and to close a 10% HELOC. Absolutely. So if you can do that, um, uh, there's a guy in Florida too. I think his name is Todd. Okay, Jeff, thanks for that. Uh, if, you, if you think of his name, let me know. And I, I'll try to post uh, to, the, to the group call here later on. Um, you, you know, again, you want to do it in whatever way is most efficient. And, and the difference is, of course, with a HELOC, you've got to qualify. And you don't have to qualify for a, uh, a margin loan. And that's the exciting thing. I've used it before back when I was actively retail originating. We would often use a margin loan for debt consolidation because then we had 10, 12% debt. And I'm like, look, let's take, use a 3%, 4%, 5% margin loan to pay off 12% credit card debt. And that made it possible to get their LTV and their ratios down so that we could then do the actual refinance or purchase or whatever. So, that, but that's collaborating. That's working as a partner with these key referral partners, again, that can generate for you a ton of new business over time. So I hope this helps. Hopefully you guys picked up some uh, good ideas today. I thank you again, Joe, for uh, uh, joining us and sharing some of your experience. Uh, we'll be back online next uh, Thursday with another guest speaker, and we'll continue the series each week. Please uh, tell your friends about us. Um, let people know that we're doing the call live and that they can also watch the calls uh, on our YouTube channel. And we'll post this call up on the channel uh, by tomorrow so you'll have access to it. This is our 10th call in the series. So if you're really having a hard time sleeping, start at the beginning and see if you can watch all 10 back to back. So all my best to you. Wish you the best. Uh, take care. Have a great day. Thanks, Tom.